Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the weekly report. Why are we siding with Al-Qaeda? Last week, I urged the Secretary of State and National Security Advisor to stop protecting Al-Qaeda in Syria by demanding that the Syrian government leave Idlib under Al-Qaeda control. While it may seem hard to believe that the U.S. government is helping Al-Qaeda in Syria, it's not as strange as it may seem. Our interventionist foreign policy increasingly requires Washington to partner up with bad guys in pursuit of its dangerous and aggressive foreign policy goals. Does the Trump administration actually support Al-Qaeda and ISIS? Of course not. But the experts who run Trump's foreign policy have determined that a de facto alliance with these two extremist groups is for the time being necessary to facilitate the more long-term goals in the Middle East. And what are those goals? Regime change for Iran. Let's have a look at the areas where the U.S. is turning a blind eye to Al-Qaeda and ISIS. First, Idlib. As I mentioned last week, President Trump's own special envoy to fight ISIS said just last year that Idlib province is the largest Al-Qaeda safe haven since 9-11. So why do so many U.S. officials, including President Trump himself, keep warning the Syrian government not to retake its own territory from Al-Qaeda control? Wouldn't they be doing us a favor by ridding the area of Al-Qaeda? Well, if Idlib is retaken by Assad, it all but ends the neocon and Saudi and Israeli dream of regime change for Syria and a black eye to Syria's ally, Iran. Second, one of the last groups of ISIS fighters in Syria are around the al tanf U.S. military base, which has operated illegally in northeastern Syria for the past two years. Last week, according to press reports, the Russians warned the U.S. military in the region that it was about to launch an assault on ISIS fighters around the U.S. base. The U.S. responded by sending in 100 more U.S. Marines and conducting a live fire exercise as a warning. President Trump recently reversed himself again and announced that the U.S. would remain at al Tanf indefinitely. Why? It is considered a strategic point from which to attack Iran. The U.S. means to stay there even if it means turning a blind eye to ISIS in the neighborhood. Finally, in Yemen, the U.S.-Saudi coalition fighting the Houthis has been found by AP and other mainstream media outlets to be directly benefiting al-Qaeda. Why help al-Qaeda in Yemen? because the real U.S. goal is regime change in Iran, and Yemen is considered one of the fronts in the battle against Iranian influence in the Middle East. So we are aiding al-Qaeda, which did attack us, because we want to regime change Iran, which hasn't attacked us. How does that make sense? We all remember the old saying attributed to Benjamin Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac that, if you lie down with dogs, you wake up with fleas. The experts would like us to think they are pursuing a brilliant foreign policy that will provide a great victory for America at the end of the day. But as usual, the experts have got it wrong. It's really not that complicated. When winning means you're allied with Al-Qaeda and ISIS, you're doing something wrong. Let's start doing foreign policy right. Let's leave the rest of the world alone. Thanks for listening.